sampling design. I used a cluster sample and I'm going to walk through how I did this because it does affect how you'll be able to use the data that's available at Virtual Victoriana. I don't have the full census for 1861 at this time loaded into this website. What I have is if we go back to Ancestry.com and we take a look at Middlesex, we see that we can break this down to the England census and then within that we choose a particular county and for my first searches I always picked Middlesex although later on I added the other two counties that are also represented in London and within that I chose each civil parish that was actually in London and not all of these are but for example Chelsea is and then there are sub neighborhoods within for example Chelsea and I went through each of these so northeast and then northwest and then south and for each of those I looked at the enumeration districts now here we can see that we have 11 enumeration districts even though the numbers go up to 16 two of them are variations on number three and we're missing some so number seven and eight are missing number 10 is missing everything between 12 and 16 is missing and this is because as the data were collected and collated into registration books sometimes multiple groups of data were combined perhaps some of the enumeration district books were lost this is the data that we have available so to indicate a relatively random kind of a sampling I could have picked one of these at random but what I decided to do is something like a cluster sampling where I specifically went to a particular neighborhood within Chelsea and I did that by picking numerically the middle entry so in this case that would be district 6 on district 6 I went to the first page that actually contained data because usually there's a description page on the front and this is an example of a typical page in the census book some of this data has already been transcribed and some of it hasn't so this is the township of Chelsea okay this is Thomas Whitfield this is Sloan Street he's the head of household he's a widower so his wife isn't living here that's condition his age is 60 rank profession or occupation he is a grocer he employs three other people and then there's information about where he was born he was born in Middlesex not all of this information is transcribed down here so for the 1861 census I had to transcribe manually the rank profession or occupation and some of the other data and this is why I don't have as complete a selection as I would like but I did copy data from here add the professions and then if it seemed to me that a household number extended past one page okay so here the last household number being dealt with is number five I'd go to the next page and if we were still on number five at the top of the next page I would continue and finish up that household here we've started another household so I would not include this data so that's how I collected this information per civil parish within each parish I took one sample per sub registration district I chose the middle enumeration district in the numerical order I took the first page of the register for the enumeration district only went to the second page if a household extended across two pages there were also some institutions that were contained for example hospitals military barracks workhouses and when I saw an unusual assortment like that I would sometimes take the entire institution and include it so there are places where the data is not random and you may want to exclude those if you're trying to get a more random kind of sample again it is not necessary to actually perform data analysis for project one it is not necessary to come to a conclusion about civil parish for project one I just want to know how you think you will make these decisions and we will address both of those goals in project two so what's your story you're going to create a description of how you would choose a place to live for 
a person. It could be yourself, it could be a fictional person, it could be a historical person under different circumstances, as I've done here. It could be because you are a researcher sent back in time looking for a neighborhood in which you will establish your cover identity. It could be that you are born somewhere in the, the Victorian era, but perhaps not living in London. You're going to move there from a distance and all you have is data to go on. Or you could be that you are describing a person in the past who's going to be you for the, the purposes of this project, and you're, you're choosing the neighborhood that fits the character that you have invented. Any reasoning that works for you is fine with me. Once you've created your final document, log into the course, and you'll want to scroll down to Within Unit 1. That's the one that's due from... And under Project, again, you can see the details about the project assignment each week here. Before you can upload your project, you must complete the self-assessment, and this will be grayed out when you first log in. The self-assessment is organized as a quiz. You can reattempt it if you want. You may take it as often as you'd like. Read through the quiz and make decisions about how good you think each aspect of your project is. Sometimes there will be places to write comments in here as well. So let's say I think that I did pretty well in the first three criteria, but I forgot to actually list whether the variables are quantitative or qualitative. Go ahead and submit your answers. And once you've done that, you will then be able to go back to the course and you will be able to submit your paper. Now, if you have made decisions based on how you submitted your answers and you want to rework your paper, that's fine too. Now, in this case, I've actually submitted a paper, but I've decided I don't like that. So I, I don't think I did a good enough job on this one. So instead of clicking Send for Marking, I'm going to click Edit These Files, and I'm going to pick a different paper. I can actually delete this one and upload a different document. So navigate to the location where your document is located. We'll pretend. Now, once your document is uploaded and attached to this assignment, you save changes. You still need to submit the assignment. When you are done, because you might want to upload more than one file, you might want to add some notes to me, when you are done uploading files, click Send for Marking. If you decide that you want to make changes after this, let's say you find an error in your file and you want to upload a new one, contact me and I will revert your submission back to draft status and you can edit your files further. But in general what this is going to do is submit the files and send a notice to me saying that you're ready to have this graded. And that's it for this week. I will shortly post a video for next week that will explain how to do that project, the project that is due Sunday the 20th of January. And I will also have a sample document for this week and for next week available shortly. Thanks for listening.